Hey everyone, welcome to Group Text. My guest today is Josh Radner, who played the character of Ted Mosby for nine seasons in the hit CBS sitcom, How I Met Your Mother. But that's not all. No, why would anyone just be a single, non-hyphenate person? Josh is also a writer, a director, a producer, a singer-songwriter, and an accomplished stage actor. I gotta say, not bad for a kid from Columbus, Ohio. He's got two (laughs) films coming out, three birthdays and all happy families, and can be seen in the new FX, which looks fantastic, miniseries, Fleischman is in Trouble, alongside, ready for this, Jesse Eisenberg, Claire Danes, and so many others, which start streaming, I can't wait, for November 17th on Hulu. Please welcome Josh Radner. Hey, Josh. Hi. Thanks for having me. I'm good. Okay, we're going to get to Fleischman is in trouble in a minute, which looks right. kind of like what happens to the characters from How I Met Your Mother when they get older and hire divorce attorneys. And all convert to Judaism. And Oh, and all convert to Judaism, which is just a whole other twist. <laughs> I, I, I Just that cracks me up. So first off, and I'm actually interested in this, you were raised in Columbus, Ohio, my son had yeah. been recruited to go play lacrosse at Ohio Wesleyan and spent two years there before oh, wow. transferring to Berkeley. So I know sure. nobody cares. Delaware, Ohio. Sure. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, Ohio Wesleyan was in, uh, I went to Kenyon College, right. so the same athletic conference. <laughs> yes. Kenyon was one of our big, big rivals. And I got to yeah. tell you, Kenyon College is beautiful. For it's beautiful. Who don't it's know. one of the most beautiful campuses in the world, truly. Yeah, Not- I shot a, I shot a movie there called Liberal Arts that I wrote and directed a couple years, uh, you know, about ten years ago. But I mean, it's anywhere you pointed the camera it was just extraordinary. By the way, we're the only two people on this call or podcast that even cas- can even moderately care about this. And by the way, Columbus has a great airport. It's not bad. I mean, when you're used to LAX or, or JFK, it's it's a it's a great one. It sure is. Now, after Kenyon, you took off to NYU for graduate degree in drama. How did your fam- family take that? I mean, Columbus to New York, they were like, "Go with God. Good luck." It, it it's a big change. I don't think it was quite that. I mean. <clears throat> You know, my my dad did not want me to study uh, acting undergrad. He wanted me to get a liberal arts degree. And shocking, have a doctor. shocking. A Jewish parent. Yeah. Yes, the fact exactly. that you already weren't going to be a doctor or a lawyer, your yeah. mother probably was, was already. He was already yeah. in shock. Uh, and he was a lawyer. Uh, but by the time, you know, he said, but, you know, if you still want to study it in grad school, we can talk about mm-hmm. that. And then I got into NYU, which was very hard to get into. And I think he started to have more faith in my professional prospects and I took it very seriously. I wasn't like a, I wasn't frivolous about it. I, I was, I was really on a path and I showed him I was serious about it. And so by that point he was supportive and uh, by now he's very supportive. So well, of course, cause you're making a living. Yeah. I, I've not- done it for quite a while, you know? Yeah. 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 So what's crazy to me is you graduated from NYU in 1999 and by 2002, you are starring on Broadway in The Graduate, and you played played Benjamin to Kathleen Turner's Mrs. Robinson. I mean, did were you prepared for things to happen that fast? Well, it's weird because it doesn't feel. I mean, a year feels like a long time. So it was what three years after I got out of school. But I mean, relatively speaking, it did happen pretty fast. But. Um, I mean, when I was training to be an actor, I wanted to be a stage actor. Being on Broadway was the goal. Um, Walking up and seeing my picture between a huge picture of Kathleen and Alicia Silverstone. I mean, it was really a trip uh, walking out after shows and signing autographs for the first time. I used to joke that I was famous on a half block of 45th Street for like 15 minutes every day. And then I'd round the corner and go to the subway and no one knew me anymore. But, uh, you know, it was it was an amazing introduction to a different level of something and uh and it was it was it was great yeah it had to be intimidating getting on stage with Kath, of course with alicia but with kathleen turner who is such a presence and if i yeah. remember correctly she was naked in the 
show too, correct? I seem to remember that. Yes, I believe she was. Um, you know, it's almost like coming out of high school into the NBA or something like you might be intimidated, but you just got to like put your game face on and give it your best. Like I didn't let them see me sweat. You know what I mean? I do remember I only had about two weeks of rehearsal before I got put in. And I remember sitting behind stage, you know, I was in like a full scuba gear before at the start of the show. And the thing was the, the, the thing was about to come up and there'd be a thousand people there. It's also called a curtain. I mean, uh, no, it was actually, it oh, wasn't a script. curtain, it was like a wall uh -huh. that went up, you know, uh, I do know the term, but uh, it was like a wall <laughs> that went up. And, uh, and I just remember thinking, I, it felt like I was getting pushed out of an airplane, you know, I mean, it was wild, but uh, it, ended, it ended up being great. I mean, that's just, to me, that's, that's crazy. It, it, what I also found fascinating when um, I was doing the research, you also worked with Neil Patrick Harris before How I Met Your Mother. Yeah, like a month before we got cast on How I Met Your Mother, we did this uh, Robbie Bates play out in LA. Uh, we played lovers in this play. I mean, it was very different than than what we ended up doing on How I Met Your Mother. Uh, but it was, uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was weird to to have, have done this very intense theater experience with him. And then next thing you know, we're, we're in a nine year run of a show together. What, did you guys both know around the same time that you were going to be cast or were you cast first? Was Neil cast first? I got cast first actually. Yeah. Really? Kobe and I, Kobe and I got cast first and then, and then I think Neil did. And I think he called me or, or texted me or something. And it was just like, it was, it was wild. It had to be nice walking into an ensemble, which how I met your mother really was already having a relationship and a, a an acting relationship with someone. Did you know anyone else when you walked into that first table read? Uh, well, I knew uh, Kobe and I had auditioned together a couple of times. So by the time we showed up, we felt like old friends. Um, I was a great fan of Allison's and Jason's. I, you know, I didn't know them, but there was something about like the first table read we did where it was just like, okay, everyone's really well cast. This thing feels you know, you can't, you can't really manufacture chemistry. You either have it or you don't. And I think we just had it. Do you realize looking back how lucky that was? Because a lot of shows try ensembles and it just doesn't work or someone gets, you know, booted after the pilot and all those different yeah. things. Do you, do you stand there here now and say, wow, it really, it's lightning yeah. in a bottle. I realized statistically it was lucky, but it's weird because you metabolize the facts of your life so quickly. And, and, right. and I think we metabolize good fortune rather quickly. Like one moment you don't have health insurance and the next year you're on a hit TV show. And it just feels like, okay, I know how this happened. And I've been working at kind of getting to that place for a lot of years. I was, I had gotten very good at getting pilots. What I was not having success at was keeping them on the air. So once it started rolling along and once, you know, once we went on Netflix fourth season, it just tipped into this thing where it was like, oh, this is actually becoming, you know, a hit. And, and, and it was a wild ride. I love the fact that you say I was very good at getting pilots, but not keeping them on the air. How many pilots do you think you got that didn't make it? I think, I think How I Met Your Mother was my fourth or fifth pilot. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I had been at it. I had been, you know, I think when people don't know you before they see you on something, they think you got discovered at the mall or something. And I had just been, you know, I'd been in a lot of audition rooms and I'd had a lot of close calls and a lot of, you know, various things happen to me in those pilots. Um, but, you know, it takes a while. I, you know, people very famously end up doing a lot of pilots before they get the show that really works. Can you remember off the top of your head, one pilot, that you did that you feel like the network missed the boat on? Well, I did, uh, I did two that I really believed in. I did this uh, show for ABC called The Court, which was kind of like an attempt. It was a John Well show. It was an attempt at like a West Wing, but like Supreme Court. And it was with Sally Field and Christina Hendricks and Craig Bierko and Diane Carroll. I mean, it had this amazing cast. Uh, we shot six, they aired three and yanked it, you know, but I learned so much in the couple months that I got to, to shoot those. Sally was so lovely to me. Um, and then I shot a pilot for NBC with Rob Reiner and Mercedes rule about a family of uh, therapists who lived and worked in the same brownstone. And it was just, 
it was all improvised and it was kind of, I, it was probably a mess, but it was super fun. Rob directed it, you know, so I had great faith in those or great hopes because I was surrounded by such good people. Um, but, you know, for whatever reason, they just didn't work. And, and the next one did, you know. What's crazy is sitting here listening to you list off the people that you've gotten to work with. Yeah. It has to be, I mean, I hope you're taking notes and going to write a book one day because the people that you're listing, yeah, most actors are lucky to get to work with once in their life. And you have this right. Ab- right. ability yeah. to keep getting the, the chance, especially as a young actor, like before uh, How I Met Your Mother, yeah. to have that yeah. time on sets with them. I know. And, and, and it's fun because one, it's very strange and wonderful to work with people that you grew up watching and admiring. And then suddenly you're, 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 you know, you're side by side, you're in the trenches with them. I remember, you know, asking Sally some questions about film acting and she was so lovely. And, and um, Cameron Mannheim, who's an NYU grad, she came and talked to us and she said, ask all your dumb questions when you're young, like, at, like, Everyone will answer your questions when they know you're new, but there's going to come a time where you should know these things and you, <laughs> you shouldn't be asking them anymore. So I just, I, whenever I was curious about something or I didn't understand something, I would even ask the DP, like, what are you doing here? You know, and then um, I, I was just very curious about the process, especially about film acting, because I felt, I felt like I had trained in the theater for so long. I understood how the theater worked a film set or a TV set was just a different ecosystem. And I really had to like learn, you know? I, you had to, when you started directing, yeah. How you had to even subconsciously pull on all that, especially I, when talking to your actors. Yeah, I did. I Well, I felt really comfortable directing the actors because I was, I was working with them as an actor, right? Like actor right. to actor, I knew how to speak that language. I was less comfortable with like, you know, pre-production locations, uh, shot listing. I mean, I had to learn all these things, but I surrounded myself with such good people that I took to it pretty quickly, but that there was a very steep learning curve. Some of it I felt really comfortable doing and others I, I just like, it was a Hail Mary, you know, I had to figure it out on the go. Yeah, and stay on budget. That's always a good time. Yeah. A um, couple more quick questions about about uh, how I how I met your mother. Did you guys ever, did the writers and producers ever tell you who it was? Uh, or did they keep it a secret big, from you guys? The big kind of uh, twist at the end, they told me that they were considering doing that first season. So I always knew the shape of it, but it wasn't, you know, they they didn't, I don't know if they knew like kind of who it would be. And they didn't cast Kristen Milioti until I think the eighth season. So there wasn't much to tell, you know. Because I would think fans would be constantly asking you, who is it? Who is it? Who is it? it were, and I always but, you know, curious- I also I also had a policy where I was because I had to live the character uh, not as the older, wiser, you know, character that Bob voiced, but that I had to live him forward and somewhat uh, innocently and ignorantly. So I didn't want to know too much going forward. I wanted to take it week to week. So I, I didn't hound them for a lot of information, you know. Oh, God, so different than I would have done. But speaking of amazing <laughs> actors and a show that I love, which is coming back for a second season, Hunters. Yeah. And you recently said in an interview, the best, one of the best pieces of advice Al Pacino gave you. Yeah. Which was always be thinking. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, he uh, I mean, talk about another person that, you know, you almost, it's a real pinch yourself thing that you're even working with him, but he's been really lovely and easy to work with. And I just, I love watching him because he's so, he's hungry. Like, like he, like it's his first day on set. You know, he just, he's so enthusiastic about acting. He's so enthusiastic about, he has limitless energy to keep trying things and he's not afraid to fail. He's really, I find him quite inspiring to be around, you know, he's like a, He's like a great golfer who can just shake off a shot that didn't go well and just kill it on the next one, you know? And I'm fortunate to be friendly with him. And I don't think- Oh, you are? Yeah. 
And I don't oh, think great. people realize how funny he is. He's so funny, and he's a great storyteller. Like oh, the best storyteller. Sometimes, we'll, sometimes we'll get him talking, kind of do our own, you know, inside the actor's studio with him, and he he just tells these unbelievable stories. And he's got you know so many years in the business. And he worked with everyone, and he kind of like connects generations. Like he worked with Brando, and right. he's now working with you know the current generation of people going on. So he's just like a one you know, a one-stop shop for like uh, the history of acting over the last, you know, half century. And so warm, such a warm yeah. man. Um, I know. What was your, He's what was, guy. what was the first day with him? Like, where did you meet him? Cause I have like the most embarrassing story of how the first time I met him. Yeah. I remember the first day, I mean, I had popped onto set, I think, a day earlier and watched him a little bit from the monitor. But then our first day, we, we when we were all there, all the hunters, uh, we were kind of sitting around, they were, they were turning it around, we were setting up a shot and Al kind of came in and sat with us and we were all like, what do you say to Al Pacino? Like, we didn't know what to say. And for some reason, because uh, the, the show took place in the summer of uh, 1977 in New York. And by the and way, said, great, great costumes. Oh, the best, the best, yeah. Um, but I said, Al, where were you in the summer of 77? And he said, oh, I was uh, I was on Broadway. I was doing a David Ray play called The Basic Training of Pablo Hummel. He goes, I think I won a Tony for that play. I can't remember. You know, you know you've had a good career when you can't remember if you won a Tony Award or not. But uh, he told us about it being so hot. And he just told us this crazy story about, you know, the girlfriend he was dating. And he left to go to Europe to see her. And then he came back and the show reopened. I mean, he just, uh, it was fun. It was fun to kind of just ask him a very simple question. And then he had this whole, you know, great tale about what that summer was like and how hot it was and how they used to swim at the Holiday Inn pool, you know, in between shows. And um, so that was the first day. And once once that day happened, we all felt a little more comfortable around him, you know? So my embarrassing story, I can't believe I'm telling this where, pe where, where people can hear it because I very rarely tell it. So I was at a dinner party and there were tons of people there. And this couple said, oh, we need to save a seat for our friend. He's late. And I was like, okay, you know, so they we left a seat between me and them. I don't even know how that happened. And I'm talking to the person to my right, like that end of the table. And Dancing with the Stars was brand new. And we were talking uh -huh. about these shows and I was discussing Dancing with the Stars and this and that and the other. And it was a, you know, a, a very fun discussion. And I feel someone sit down next to me, but I'm in the middle of a discussion. And I said, everybody, you're kidding yourself. You're, you're, you're fooling yourself if you think everybody isn't watching these shows. Everybody's watching Dancing with the Stars. And I turned around and said, right, even you're watching Dancing with the Stars. Think I'm going to include the person next to me. And it's right. El Pacino who without missing a beat goes, yeah, I've been watching it. My friend is on it right now. And I'm like, oh. and he goes, I go, oh, who? He goes, George Hamilton. And I'm like, I feel like my first time I ever talked to Al Pacino, I asked him about Dancing with the Stars. Well, I would say I don't think that's that embarrassing because I thought you were going to say Al Pacino would say, I don't watch Dancing with the Stars. But in fact, he was watching it. So your theory was correct. And it was yes. confirmed by Al. But the funny, I mean, literally without missing a beat, thinking, oh, I need to include this person out of my yeah. good manners to the left. And I go, even you're watching, right? And you're face to face with Al Pacino. Yeah. You're just like, yeah. I want to crawl under the table. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that story is as embarrassing as you think it is for what it's worth. Um, nah, you had to be there. You had to, be, like, I mean, just for me, it was embarrassing as hell. Okay, all right. You don't want that, you don't want that to be your first line to an icon. Right. Did you, did you move the conversation into to more friendly territory after that? Well, it stayed very friendly, and we actually had an extensive conversation about reality competition TV, and then okay. moved on to talking about his daughter, who uh, ended up becoming a college softball player. Okay. Yeah. 
And then yeah. for the rest of the night, there was a woman kind of stalking him around the room. And he kept pulling yeah. me over to sit next to him so she couldn't. <laughs> yeah. Everyone um, wants, everyone wants everybody it. wants it. So Fleischman in, is in trouble. Like we said in the beginning, yeah. it's it's not exactly how I met your mother. It's a very grown up show. You know, it's yeah. divorce, anxieties, parenting, love, relationships, class. What what drew you to the material? Um, I mean, it's a great book, great network. Taffy, who wrote the novel, was adapting it and running the show. Um, Lizzie Kaplan, who I've known for a lot of years, was playing the uh, the, the the character that I was going to play opposite. I play her husband. Um, Claire, Jesse, I mean, all the elements were incredible. And um, filming in New York is always fun. I, I mean, there was nothing, there was no you know, you're always kind of having to do a, you know, pro con on some level. There were just, there weren't any cons. It was just like, yeah, this is the kind of project I want to be in. Um, tell me a little bit about Adam, who's your character. Well, he's a lawyer. Uh, Which, oh, I know you could draw, lawyers. I was going to say you could draw on family exactly. experience. Exactly. He's a bit of a, uh, he, you know, it's kind of an interesting flip because he really, loves the suburbs he loves life with his wife and his children in the suburbs and his wife is kind of going crazy and feeling you know uh, asphyxiated by the whole thing and i thought that was a really interesting thing to play like this is what we wanted this is what we worked for and now you're you know kind of freaking out it was like it was like she broke this contract that they had together um and uh it's an interesting role because it's like I'm quietly simmering for a lot of it. And there's, you can see these resentments and, uh, you know, he's scorekeeping and all these kind of things they advise you don't do in marriages. And uh, they're all doing them. And then it kind of explodes. I was at the premiere the other night. It's excellent. If you do say so yourself. No, it's really good. I was barely in the premiere. <laughs> I'm barely in the pilot. So I'm saying that objectively. Yeah. Um, I'm super excited to see it. And like you don't have enough on your plate, you also are a singer songwriter. Um, yeah. You're you 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 are in a group with Ben Lee in the group. By the way, super imaginative name, Radner and Lee. Yeah. Like, well, that, it, you know, that it, had to take a long time other, to come up with. Uh, we had other much worse names, so I think you should be happy that we landed on Radner and Lee. But we 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 put out two records. We're 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 not making new music right now. I'm putting out my own stuff. I have uh, like a double album I recorded in Nashville that'll be out next year. So uh, I just love writing songs. It's a great joy. Um, of theater, TV, film, music, if you could only, and I hate when people do this to me, but I'm going to do it to you anyway. In order of what you would like to do. I'm not going to ask you which is your favorite or if you could only do one because I know that's an impossible question. Put them in in, in yeah. ranking order of how you like to spend your time. What were the choices? Everything you do. Theater, <laughs> TV, feature, and that includes directing, music. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, this is so annoying, but it's like whatever one I'm not doing, I want to do. So if I do... Uh, a, a hardcore drama I want to do some comedy if I'm doing too much acting I want to write and direct a film I always want to be writing songs and singing songs so I, I mean happily no one except you is making me choose so I'm just going to keep doing all of them but but day to day I, I probably right now I'm just doing the most music because it's what I, I mean the most frustrating thing about being an actor is you have to wait until they call you off the bench. You know, you can't just say, right. I'm going to act today. You need to be a part of something. Um, so I lean into writing and I, and now I lean into songwriting because I like to be creative every day. I like to wake up and have a feeling of purpose and that I can do something. And I can always write a song. I can always write uh, a movie or a play. And I do all those things because it gives me a little more agency in my life. Well, I can, always, you know, I always hate when people say, would you rather be, writing, hosting, producing. And I would say exactly the same answer, which yeah. is I, I, whichever one I'm not doing, I want to be doing the other. Yeah. And I, and I also get a little bored with too much of the same thing. So I like having a life that's full of variety creatively, you know? And, and as you said, you can always lean in and write something or write a song, just like I can always lean in and annoy my son. 
Yeah, it's all of it. All of it. So just this week, page six ran a blurb that you actually have admitted to or acknowledged, not admitted, that you have a girlfriend right now and that you met during filming. Not quite. But let me just clarify. When you're on the re- when you're on the red carpet, you're doing all these interviews. I mean, the question was, <laughs> what uh, did the did the marriages and divorces of Fleischman make you more scared and cynical about marriage and relationships? And I said, no, I'm I'm in a you know happy relationship. So I, I you know that's all that was. I they turned it into a story, but I don't think there's much story. Well, you're in a relationship. I am. I am. And happily, you know. Uh, so, you know, is your does your Jewish mother think you're good she's good enough for her only son? Uh yeah, they're very pleased with now, uh, better. Yeah. Are you gonna really make her happy and get married? I can't you think that I'm gonna tell you that first. The, the, why not? I, lovely we just met a half hour ago. I'm it, not that's gonna... why that's why I'm the perfect person to tell. We don't no, know anybody in common. <laughs> right. As a, and this very private conversation we're having, it will be just between us, right? Duh. So, <laughs> I, I, so what is next? What you got teed up for us besides Fleischman is in trouble and hopefully soon, since I'm a huge fan of uh, season two of Hunters. Yeah, Hunters uh, will be out in January, I think, uh, beginning of next year. Uh, I shot these two movies that I really love um, that hopefully those will be out soon and just going to figure out how to release all this music that I made in Nashville. I'm super excited about it. Josh, it has been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much. Oh, you too. Thanks for having me.